listening to the Beef Babble Podcast, episodes full of candid conversations that speak to the hard truth that it takes more than hustle and luck to be your own CEO. Being a creative entrepreneur and running a business is not at all like the glam that you see on Instagram or reality TV. The truth is, it's showing up every single day, putting in the blood, sweat, and yes, lots of tears. Oh, do not forget all the hard work. I'm your host, Bobby Brinkman, photographer, coach, speaker, wedding industry educator, diet Mountain Dew addict. You see why, right? I am hitting the pause on that hustle and luck myth button because it's more than getting a really cute website and hanging a now open sign. Not just waving the magic wand so that all the success, money, and clients will just be lined up ready to hire you. Hope is not a business strategy, my friends. And along with my guests, the goal of our podcast is to motivate, educate, and celebrate career and entrepreneurs discussing topics and information that will help you get and keep you in that CEO mindset through our candid conversations. You're going to hear stories from other creatives at different stages along their career journey. They'll be sharing the same struggles you have, as well as business insights, tools, and foundations that they have in place to keep their businesses moving forward, no matter what kind of S-H-I-T tries to knock you off your career path. I want to challenge you to unapologetically keep showing up to attract your ideal clients, serve them in the most fab way, while collecting a purpose-driven paycheck. I want to empower you to create a career that you not only love and are proud of, but also one that your clients love and will support even more. Now let's get started. So how many times do you find yourself letting self-doubt creep in? You wonder if this is the career path you should be on. Should you be a business owner? Should you shift or pivot or change? In one of the bazillion books that you're reading on business success, where's the sentence that tells you exactly what to do or how to fix that doubt that you're feeling? When everything else is happening around you, everyone else seems to be moving forward, everybody else seems to be changing, then there's you. And you wonder, am I where I'm supposed to be? Am I doing what I am supposed to be doing? How will I serve my clients if I can't feel that I'm serving myself? If you think you can or you think you can't, either way, you're going to be right. That's from Henry Ford. Today we're talking about betting on yourself. So turn up those earbuds. This is the Beef Apple Podcast. So we're getting ready to come into the last quarter of 2020. And... I don't think I need to tell anybody just how crazy of a year 2020 has been. Uh, Unprecedented, nothing ever like it, you know, all the adjectives. But I also want to ask you right now for a few moments to just stop what you're doing, unless you're driving a car, of course, but stop what you're doing and just pause and take a moment of gratitude. Because guess what, everybody? Guess what, my fabulous friends? You're still here. We're in the last quarter of 2020 and you are still here. Sure, you're bruised, you're battered, uh, you've cried a lot, you uh, don't know if you have any tears left, Um, you've torn up your wedding planners, you've torn up your day planners, you've torn up any, any sort of plans or direction or goals that you started way back in 2019 for what was going to be the most amazing year in the wedding industry that we've seen for decades, right? So I want you to stop for a minute, look in the mirror, look in the rearview mirror, just stop for a second and go, wow, I am still here. I'm standing. Now, I may not know exactly where I'm going or if I'm going to go left or I'm going to go right, but I know I'm moving forward. I know that I'm not going to stand still. And I want you to know that you will be as fabo as you were going to be in 2020. And that, guess what? You are fabo in 2020. It just looks different in our bank accounts and what we do on the weekends. All of it is different. But look what you did. You figured out a way to still be here. You figured out a way to serve those clients of yours to make logistic changes that you thought were not possible. You spent time on the phone, rescheduling and rescheduling, thinking outside the box, thinking smaller than thinking bigger, doing what you know how to do. Serve your clients and serve them well. 
and to also serve our fellow community because it's taken all of us to make these pivots and these changes and these adjustments to these small weddings. So take that moment of gratitude. You owe it. I tell you all the time to celebrate victories big and small, and I try to celebrate all of you as I cheer you on. I believe each and everything that you accomplish is a victory, even if you learn from it. Even if you failed trying, you learn from it, and that is a victory, and that is a win that needs to be celebrated. You've hung on. You've made it to October and you've been working and you've been serving and you've been pivoting. And you know what? I bet you're going to pivot some more. I bet you're still going to be pivoting in 2021 because guess what, everybody? All these weddings are sliding over this way. And I still think it is going to take us to 2023 before we start getting back or redefining what we in the industry will be calling normal. So, yep, yeah, you're bruised and you got a few more dings in you. And you're mentally exhausted. <laughs> Talk about a wedding hangover. Y'all, it's a non-stop one. Am I right? Can, can I see you all raving your hand going, yes, shake your heads up and down? We get exhausted on our weekends when we work our weddings because the adrenaline. And we're serving in such a joyful way. And even some of the bumps that we have on wedding day. Because let's face it, guys, there's not a single wedding that is perfect. We're all humans. And humans make mistakes. Good or bad, we make them. We cover them up well because that's what we do. We're professionals. But we leave those weddings exhausted because we left it all there. And yes, I know that as photographers and sometimes other artists, we go, oh my gosh, if I would have done one more photo, if I would have done one more thing. But for the most part, we've left it all there. You know, the athlete in me always says, leave everything on the field. Know you've done your best. Look back, take your bow, leave holding your head high. Good sportsmanship applauding the rest of your team as well and thanking your fans, hence your couples and your guests. So you have done that. So now you realize you're mentally exhausted, but you know how tough you are. And you figured out just how tough you are, how resilient you are. That at the beginning of all this back in March, you were devastated. You know, the creep of that doubt came in and said, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to make my car payment? Am I going to lose my house? Detrimental to not just our industry, but any hospitality industry, and and let's face it, any small business owner, school teachers, medical frontline workers, we've all been affected. But we're in the business of love and service of happiness. So did it affect us differently? I think so, because we're used to delivering those happy moments. And, uh, even at a lot of weddings, there's some tears because somebody important is, is not present any longer. But for the most part, it's the speeches that talk about how proud somebody is of your accomplishments. That's what we get to witness every week, weekend, and that's the privilege that we have. And all of a sudden, we're witnessing the opposite in the world. We're witnessing hate and brutality and, and disagreements. And we're so far to the right and so far to the left, and we just need to get back to the middle, Right. So you realize how strong you are and you realize that even though we have a wonderful community and an amazing fabo industry, it's you. It's you that had the perseverance to stick through this year. And it is you that will carry you to 2021 and beyond. You bet on yourself. Betting on yourself all the time is the way to go. We all need our support team. We all need that team that lifts us up. We all need those people to do everything that is above our scope of genius. We have to have those. We have to have those around us to make us be able to do our job better, but to allow us to do our job better. You know, we're better served serving our clients, doing the things that we can bring to the table that will enhance the business elevate the rest of our team and our industry. So we have to have those people around us, but betting on yourself, believing in yourself and knowing that you at the end of the year are standing because you refuse to fall over. As many things that were tossed at you, you refuse to fall over. You caved a little bit and you hung tight and you've done the best that you can do. And you knew by showing empathy and compassion And dealing with something that your biz has never had to go through uh, and your life as well, both directly affected and you're standing. And it's you. 
that is allowing this to happen. 2020 has given us plenty of opportunities, and I really have tried to look at it that way. I've looked at it as here's the opportunity for us to refresh, reinvent, recharge. And as scary as, scary as that is, friends, I know the struggle is real, but I don't want you to live in that space of fear and let fear stop you from continuing to move forward. And I don't want you to let that self-doubt come creeping back in for the rest of the year. I want you to be proud of where you are standing right now. And I want you to know that you have done a fabulous job. I don't want you to settle into that space of lack either. Lack of bookings or lack of income or lack of getting and believing that on the other side of this, there's fabo. And, and you've heard me say in plenty of episodes, and if you've seen me speak virtually here lately, you hear me talking about that I firmly believe fabo is waiting for us on the other side. So we have to get ready for that. So while you're betting on yourself, and I want you to keep betting on yourself, I want you to prepare yourself that there is fabo coming. And right now the phone may not ring, be ringing as much, and you may not be getting quite the big bookings that we used to. But booking season is going to happen. And, you know, I'm going to come back with another episode on that. You know that. But we are going to have a booking season. It's just going to look differently. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. So how do we prepare for that? We prepare by understanding the industry and knowing how our service and what we do will affect each couple that comes to us. We have to prepare ourselves to think differently to make different suggestions or arrangements. And we might have to work with some different vendors to make that whole budget package work. And I use the budget word here as whether it's high or whether it's low, it's still people will have a budget right now. Especially during election years, things slow down. So if there's any new uh, new entrepreneurs listening into this podcast, election years are always hard. Uh, People hang on to the money, people hang on to their decisions, and weddings are affected by that. As much as we don't like to admit it, they are. So here we are in 2020, and normally we're getting ready for booking season. It's just around the corner. We all know that when November 1st gets here and part of that Thanksgiving gets here, we start seeing our inquiries come in in our website contact forms and our social media DMs. But I want you to be ready, and I want you to be ready with the mindset that you are betting on yourself and that by betting on yourself and shifting your mindset, you know, it's going to be okay. It's going to look different. It is going to look different. Will you have to adjust some things that you have to do? Um, I don't want you taking a wedding that won't suit you or that is not on point with your voice or your stand just to get the money. And I won't lie to you. I've been there. I've done that. You know, it's hard, but you know, It's a scary space to know that you don't know how you're going to pay your mortgage or you're going to pay your car payment and you have other people counting on you and it's hard because you get into that space of lack and fear and man, it will drag you in real fast. I want you to stay on the bet on yourself space. Easier said than done. Don't shoot the messenger. I just want to remind you that betting on yourself will get you through the rest of this year and set you up for 2021. I want you to think back to when you started that you believed you were unstoppable. You had this wild idea that you were going to be in the wedding industry. And every single weekend, you were going to go, show up, be a party, have cake, sit and get to be friends with these couples and their and their guests and, and, and listen to good music and have a great meal. And uh, quickly into this industry, you realize that none of those things <laughs> actually happen. Um, you know, you might get to take some cake home and you might get a meal. But quite often, let's face it, it's a box lunch. Caterers are doing so much better at that. So I applaud the caterers that are listening in. But that's not why we're there. We're there to serve and we're there to deliver memorable moments, whether you're a photographer, the band, the musician, the florist, the caterer, the concierge service at the hotel or the golf club or wherever, we're there to work and to serve our clients. And they've invested in us to deliver those memorable moments, stress-free, mind you. But that's because they invested in you because they saw what you could do. They knew what you could do. They believed in you. They took a chance on you. They bet on you. And I want you to continue doing that to yourself. Back when you thought you were unstoppable, 
here you are. Because you know what? You were unstoppable. And you still are unstoppable. I know when we take the steps back and we look at this chapter of our business and this journey, lots of us are still focusing on the steps and not the staircase. And that is how we still need to move forward. One step at a time. The staircase is there. And we're going to get there. We just have to rebuild the staircase. And it's taking all 2020 to do that. And it's going to take a little bit longer to do that. But know when you move to that staircase and you start elevating yourself little by little, you are going to have a wonderful new view. You've probably reinvented your business a little bit. You've taken this time to go, you know what? This was never working. I didn't even notice I wasn't doing this. And you removed it. We had the opportunity to streamline some things. We've had the opportunity to go, hey, I've always wanted to read that book or I've always wanted to take that class. We've had that opportunity. We've been able to work on our business. When so many things get busy during especially the fall wedding season that our to-do list grows and grows and grows and our desk just keeps piling up, that sometimes we can't even talk to a new client. We're so busy that we don't take the time to realize that our business was overrunning us. We're not holding space for welcoming new clients because we're so busy serving the business and the tedious task that that in the end fails serving our clients. So we've had the opportunity to clean all that up, streamline, automate, do some things and learn some new tasks. Maybe many of us hire some VAs and assistants, which we should have hired before because you know how expensive it is to wait till it's too late to get somebody? Sometimes that investment in finding somebody to help you to do the things that are not your strong suit, bet on yourself that letting go of those things will make your business better and will allow you to better serve your clients. You know where you started. And you knew no matter what, you did not come this far to come this far, right? You didn't come this far just to quit. And I know you all have heard that before, but I do hope you believe it. Few people have seen our sacrifices in our dark days and our depressions trying to figure out what we're going to do. You know, most of us in the industry are solopreneurs. Um, We're creatives at heart. So a lot of times we don't deal on the business side or it's the less glamorous, fun side. But it's vitally important that we understand our business. And this might have just been the opportunity for us to take a hard look into some of the things that we're doing right and some of the things that we need to improve on and get rid of some of those things that, you know, were failing us as business owners. I know that, you know, opening email got scary, answering the phone got scary because on the other end of that call or that email was somebody demanding a refund, demanding for us to turn over any money that was paid, threatening lawsuits, threatening bad reviews. Well, I'm going to go to the media if you don't do this. Very few people outside this industry saw how it was affecting us and that it is a very depressing time as a business owner in the wedding industry. We got lots of media and lots of press and even on our own social media. I mean, I, I'm, I totally did it that I applaud my couples for hanging with me, for letting me reschedule. But I also try to applaud all of us in the industry because we all deserve a pat on the back because we're still here. As sad as it was that our couples didn't get to have their day, neither did we. We worked just as hard in a different way to deliver their day. They might have waited a couple years and did some planning and dreams and everything to get their day. But you know what? So did we. We vowed to not take another client on that day. We got excited to have them part of our business family. We were thrilled to be working with them. Our desire to serve them was insurmountable. The privilege to be part of their day, as always, was what we signed up for. And we were getting crucified for standing by our contracts, which we have every right to do. That's why they're there. But many people didn't see that. But we bet on ourselves that we were going to do the right thing. Whether you refunded partially, whether you refunded all of it, whether you got rid of that client altogether, you did what you felt was best. You bet on yourself and you bet on your business. Own it. Move on. Do not let what happened back then and what happened earlier this year 
define where you want to go in 2021. It's going to define you in a way that made you different, made you better, made you rethink, made you dig deep. But it's not going to define you and what you're going to do in the future as far as success goes. Because guess what, friends? You're already successful. Whatever your definition is of success, you bet on yourself, and that's the definition. And you knew what you wanted to do, you knew your goals, you set out to get them. That made you successful. You know, all of us want to get back to serving our clients. We want to get back to celebrating. We want to get back to working, but we want to do it safely. Each of us have done and are still doing our best with a smile and heavy shoulders, but we're almost there. Last quarter of 2020. Look how far you've come. Again, look in the mirror. You're still standing. Please don't stop. I want you to focus on this last part of 2020. I want you to look back only to see how far you have come. I want you to look and see all your hard work and soul searching that you've done during the quarantine and the downtime and where that's going to take you moving your business forward. I want you to reflect on what you learned, those lessons that we have been dealing with in 2020 and we've learned from these lessons Now we have the opportunity to take those lessons learned and move forward. We were thrilled to have all those weekend pajamas, uh, maybe some longer walks with our dog and and maybe, you know, some longer walks just looking at the neighborhood, just seeing something different, getting in the car and just driving in a direction that we never really knew what was around our areas. Those were opportunities that we got so busy working, we failed to take advantage of. And you all know how I feel about, you know, be productive, not busy. And busy is not an excuse. So we were given that opportunity in 2020 to really not have to be responsible, might be the right word, be responsible for delivering a wedding on the weekend. We were responsible for being present with our family and our friends or what, and ourselves. Let's not forget, we were responsible for being present for ourselves during this time. The fact that we sat down at a dinner table, even if you were by yourself, you sat down at a dinner table often. Or heck, you might even sit on the couch for the first time and said, you know what, I'm going to eat on the couch, damn it, this is what I'm going to do. Because that's what 2020 gave us, an opportunity to throw everything out the window, to embrace some changes, and to make changes. And you know what, here you go again, guys, you're still standing. Even the silly things that we did that had nothing to do with our business that we said we would never allow in our house or that we would never do, we've done. And look, I guarantee you that most of us have survived that. Those little things that we weren't going to do didn't fail. We just didn't want to try them. And you all know that. I say quite often that, you know, if you don't even try, you can't fail. So you have to try in business and in life. We all miss the social side of our weddings and catching up with our, you know, vendor family. But we're going to have so many more things to add to our memories from our family, our family time at home. When you think back in 2020, we're going to have so many selfies and so many other photos. This is documenting the year of 2020. And those opportunities would have never been documented had we not had COVID. And I know COVID is hard. And it's real. I've lost friends. Many of you have lost friends and loved ones. And that validates how real it is. But we also have the opportunity to embrace each other a little harder and a little closer. And maybe even miss our clients even more. And grow that relationship. And and I know that I've been back to doing my weddings here in October. This is the middle of October. And while I can't run up and hug, um, and I can't because that's my choice, So I I should probably preface that by saying my choice was not to hug. Um, I want to be able to serve all my clients that have rescheduled and put their trust in me this October. So I want to be very careful that I show up healthy and safe so I can serve each of them. So I want to be doing the right thing by not hugging. But I know all our 2020 couples, we love a little harder. And I think, and I know 
that they appreciate everything that we've done. And most of them believe in us, and that's why they stayed with us, because they know we were hurting as well, and we were suffering. We want to get back to the privilege to celebrate happy and love with our clients every weekend. But that came with sacrifices for our family, and we were able to get that back as well. We miss the time with our family so that we can serve our clients. It's a choice and a joy and a privilege. But for 2020, we spent more weekends with our family than I think most of us that have been in this business long enough have ever done. And as you continue to grow in your business, you'll learn to take weekends off. You'll learn to trust yourself and invest in yourself and believe in yourself and bet on yourself that taking off one week in a month for family time will not break your client couples and will not break your business. You'll learn that it's okay to step away. Not like 2020, but you'll learn taking a weekend off to recharge and refresh and to embrace the gifts of all the success that you're having. Whether you, you know, go down to the food bank or you go serve in an elderly center, your success affords you the opportunity to give back and make an impact and to volunteer or to just do nothing. Your definition of success should also be how you spend your off time. Betting on yourself will allow you to create that work-life balance. In other years, at the stroke of midnight, most of us were going to be, oh my gosh, I can't wait to leave the year behind. I'm ready for a new one. And I know that this year for 2020, a lot of us will carry a lot of our weddings and our couples into 2021. As an industry, we're going to be dealing with this. There's still going to be paperwork and there's going to be clients files and, and updated designs from 2020. So we're going to have to keep looking at 2020. But I want you to remember that you're going to dust it all off and you're going to sprinkle it some really good fab on this now because now you're carrying it to 2020. I want you to carry the positive opportunities into 2021. I want you to leave all that crap behind, the hell of a year it's been, take the new clients for 2021 and say, here we go. And I want you to shout it. I want you to go, man, I'm ready. We are so ready for 2021. Add that sprinkle confetti. Add that fable dust. Whatever you want to call it. Take those client folders. Take whatever system you use and move it. And put a big old smile on 2021. And let's get ready. I want you to celebrate the fact that you are still standing that you are what makes the difference and that you have to be bold and brave enough to take the past and learn from that and move it forward to 2021. I have no doubt that COVID-19 will be, be used in a business struggle and business empowerment for motivational speakers to TED Talks, to workshops, to this is the biggest thing that ever happened to me in my business, COVID-19. We will be forever hearing about COVID-19 and presentations for years to come. So let's make sure when you share your story and your talk about roadblocks and stumbles and that we all have had them, every one of us have had something. Why many of us have thrived, I want you to remember that you survived. Investing in yourself and betting on yourself, you survived and you thrived. The thriving part is the fact that you're still here. I know that 2020 has taught us how much we have to give and how much we have counted on ourselves, how much faith you've gained, and that betting on yourself and looking at the opportunities, you're going to be able to go deeper and do more things with this. You're here stronger and with a new enthusiasm and with more vivid ideas and a new set of plans than you may have actually put down on paper for 2021. You're going to continue to show up and you're going to build your sustainable, profitable, and purposeful career. And you're going to make an impact by encouraging and empowering our community and our industry will be even stronger for it. It will be stronger because you bet on yourself. So as you wrap up October and you get ready to head into November, keep moving forward. Each and every one of you are fab will be on measure. Each and every one of you are needed. We cannot do this industry without your talents, your compassion, and your caring. 
Your businesses are your businesses because of who you are. Look in that mirror. And for the rest of the year, every single day, remind yourself when you look in that mirror, you made it. And then tell yourself in that mirror, I'm betting on you. I'm betting on you for the rest of 2020. And I'm betting on you for the most fabul 2021. Till next time, everybody. Remember, you're fabul. Go out there and serve and serve safely. And I can't wait to hear all your successes and all the things that you're doing. I cannot wait to continue cheering you on. You know how to DM me bobbybrinkman.com grab a fabo chat grab a discovery call i'm here for you you want to vent you want to chat you want to talk you want to air something out nothing is off limits that's what the fabo chats are for coaching it's at my heart i want to cheer each and every one of you over so until next time everybody this is the be fabo podcast keep being fabo For more information about today's show, check out the show notes on the BeFabo blog at bobbybrinkman.com. Along with some offers for our listeners, you'll also find information about how to work with Bobby as a coach, a speaker, or for workshops. She'd love to collaborate with you. Oh, and don't forget, subscribe to the podcast to keep motivation coming to your earbuds. Be Fabo.